Okay, my name is Randy Henry, and I'm an artist member of Baton Rouge Gallery. I've been a member here since, I think, 1984. And I first began showing works in the gallery when I was making collages. That was about two years out of graduate school. And I actually began making collages when I was in the in first year of graduate school. I was taking a drawing class under Robert Warren, and I was making drawings with graphite material, pencil and graphite crayons and things like that, black and white drawings. So he decided to uh, look at the drawings and ask me to take the drawings to another dimension. So he su suggested that I just tear some of the drawings up, cut some of the drawings up, and glue those pieces down and come up with something new. So I experimented with that and came up with, with some um, collages based on pencils and uh, gra graphite materials. And then later he suggested that I look at some artworks by Roman Robertson and perhaps combine, look for other materials to, com to combine with, it, with the piece of uh, drawings. So I started looking at photographs and piece of colored papers and I would paint some of the pieces of papers and I would cut those materials up and glue down and that began my uh, journey into making collages. Of course, many of you as artists know that collages started back in around 1907, 1908 when Pablo Picasso and George Frank would just fan pieces of scrap materials on the streets, like cigarette packages and food packages and things like that, that were used in commercial art, uh, that were made in the commercial art world. And they would begin gluing those articles and part, uh, pieces of papers to their paintings. And then, of course, something very interesting happened in the world of modern art. And of course, as many of you know, I'm, I'm more into abstract art. I first began my interest in art with abstract art. As a, as a kid in sixth and seventh, eighth grade, at, uh, as a student in junior high school, I began making abstract art. And of course, back then I was influenced by artists like Pablo Picasso and George Bryant, and also William de Kooning, Jackson Pollock, people who seemed to be just having a lot of fun with paint, you know, throwing paint around and just making abstract forms and making those forms work together. Now. Um, I think my first notion that collage can be a really exciting way of making art was back in around, I think it was somewhere around 1978 or 79 when I was an under, undergraduate student at Southern University. And I, I always hang around John Paul Hubbard, who was a wonderful painter. And now he worked, he worked uh, in a representational way and also in an abstract way, but he was good at both. But I was really drawn to his abstract paintings. And one day I was standing over him as he was in his tiny studio in behind his office on the campus. And he was working on a little painting. And he reached up and got a um, Playboy magazine out. <laughs> Took a pair of scissors, turned it to a page. He cut the little image out from a figure in a Playboy magazine. And he was careful by the way he cut it out. And um, I watched him take that image. It was a small image from the mid section of a Playboy image in a magazine. And he took that image and glued it down to part of his painting. It was an abstract painting. And I just thought that was like magic, the way it happened, the way that photograph image looked next to, next to painted forms. And of course, I didn't begin making collages right then. It was about two years later in that graduate uh, class at LSU that I began making collages under Robert Warren. So um, I just decided that collage would be a way of making some really interesting works of art. And then in 1980, 82 through around 1985, I was using photographic images with paint and with other raw materials in collage too. Um, a student asked me when I was um, in December, I went to, Mac, to a library, and um, one of my students asked me, uh, Mr. Henry, Professor Henry, are you gonna um, bring some scrap materials? Are you gonna go down the streets in Liberia and pick up scrap materials like paper and scrap materials from the streets and bring back and use in your artworks? So I said to him, I probably will. And so I did uh, see a lot of scrap materials on the streets of Liberia, and, but I didn't bring any of it with me to use in my artworks. I did bring some uh, fabric with me that some of the fabric designers and textile workers put in, in bags for me to bring back and use in my collages. And when making collages now, I'm concerned about the permanences of materials. And so I try to use um, just about 100% acid-free materials in my collages now. Now, the collages I made in, 1980, in the early 1980s, I used photographic images in those works. And of course, you know, 
the paper is not acid free from magazines. But I was in a collector's house a few months ago looking at a work of art that uh, she has from 1983, I think it was. And I went up to the work and looked at it. It's like Benny Andrews said when he visited us as students at LSU. He said that when he would go to someone's house and see one of his artworks in the house, he would um, go up to the work and look at it. And like a, a seamstress, like a fashion designer, I want to put on the work and see if it's still strong. So I went up to the, to the little collage in the house and looked at it and got close to it and looked at the photographic images from the magazines. And the work looked like as if I had just finished it yet the day before. Still in good shape, looking just like it looked when it came from the studio. And that was about 27 years ago. That work's about almost 30 years old, looking fresh and new. But today I like using uh, just about all acid-free materials in my work. So I did bring some fabric from um, Liberia to use in my collages. Now, I've been making small collages for a number of years, and I was trying to get away from making small collages back. But by going to Liberia, that opened up a whole new world of using um, African fabrics and fabric from India that uh, Liberian seamstress and fashion designer get to use in their works. And this brought about a whole, a whole new uh, uh, type of designs and images in the works. And <coughs> the color in Liberia is very bright and rich. And also, you know, many of, much of the fabric that they use in their works are filled with designs and patterns. And that's what I was after. So I began to combine those patterns and different types of fabric with what I had painted on pieces of papers and glued down from um, collage material. And of course, that opened up a whole new um, area for working for me, and I thought the works were very interesting and good enough to show in this exhibition. Now, I work by improvising, that is, making the images up as I paint, and these patterns came after I finished the works. I looked into the works and saw some influences from, that, from our Liberia. I just named, gave the works these different titles, like, um, Liberian Dreams, one of these works is called, some are untied up. Um, <coughs> this work is called Street Corners. I found it very interesting to stand on street corners in Liberia and just look, look out at the people there. And, I mean, thousands of people are hanging out on street corners, selling, them, um, selling their goods or making, um, weaving, um, making um, fabric designs and things like that, sewing. Um, it's just interesting on a street corner in Liberia that place you can look up and see people working and everyone there is working. So this work is called Street Corners. I'm trying to capture in an abstract way the excitement on street corners in uh, Liberia. Another work I call Liberian, Dream, Liberian Dreams, this work, looking at the different uh, faces in Liberia, of different uh, many of the people there who seem to have Lots of dreams. They want to dream about getting out of Liberia and going somewhere else and um, just making it as individuals. Some works are left untitled and another work, the face says it. That's called the face says it and I would look at the faces on some of these people in Liberia. I kind of read into that psyche. It's something like you look at a, a face of a person and the face says it all. You can tell a lot about that person just by looking at the face of that particular individual. So I'm still having a lot of fun making these collage works, and I think I, I don't think I'm going to stop making small collages at this time. I want to still work with small collages, and I just started a big painting, just so that some of these influence from small collages perhaps can get into that big painting. So um, I like going back and forth. Uh, small works influence large works, and large works influence small works, and it's always good to keep it exciting working as an artist. Question. Yeah. Getting back to your oh, art yeah. painting, are you going to do uh, more than one, or you don't? Are you going to do uh, a series, or just uh, you said you were working on a larger painting? I, that's large painting I'm working on. Just I just I feel like doing a large yes, painting, so I just scratch I, I just scratch one canvas, um, five by five, sixty by sixty inches, just to see what I can do on it. And then hope, I still want to do more large paintings too. I think I want to spend um, the summer months making some large paintings. It's always a storage problem, making large paintings. So I did stretch one canvas to, to experiment with a large painting. Also, I want to get back to this and oil paint too. These are acrylics, mixed media acrylics and um, uh, acrylics and piece of painted paper. 
and also my smaller paintings are acrylics and oil paint sticks. And now I want to get back to using oil paint with a brush to make some large paintings too. Also, I think my new collages on canvas will be um, acrylic paint collages and oil paint too. So I really want to get back to using uh, the rich oil paints too. And then I may do a series sometime later also. I don't usually think of um, the paint is happening. Sometimes series come about and sometimes not. Okay, anyone else? You were last? Yeah, the, um, can you talk about the, the colors in Liberia and the, and the, the fabrics? You were saying um, yeah. they're rich, like a lot of geometric patterns, or um, what kind of colors are they used? Um, actually, how is it different from what we see here? Actually, in the uh, fashion seamstress and fashion designers in Liberia, many, some of them use African fabric, but it's amazing that much of the fabric that they use, when you see the shops in Liberia, much of the fabric that they use come from Asia. Now, many people in Asia sell in fabric to them. And one lady, uh, Ms. Doe, did a talk. She's a uh, textile um, expert in Liberia. And she did a talk on textiles. And she's trying to get Africans to begin using more of the indigenous textiles that they use there with kind of rich colors in them. And even, if, even the neutral colors are rich in patterns and textures. But they have a lot of bright, bright colors that come from Asia, from India and different countries in Asia that they use in their uh, designs. If you look at them walking down the streets in our fashion, very bright, very bright, bright and rich in patterns. But, but then this, she told us something, uh, she also said, Ms. Doe also said that she doesn't want them to completely get away from Asian fabric. She still wants them to use that in their works, but still use the indigenous fabric too, because it can work together. And also, they um, they can uh, sell the um, sell the fa fashion made from all kinds of different fabric, but don't get rid of the indigenous fabric that's rich in patterns and textures too. So, but it's really bright, bright and bright and rich. Yeah. I have a question, Randall. Yes. Um, when you start your pieces, do you start with collage and then paint, or is it you work back and forth between the paint and collage? Do you is there a certain way you start, or is each one different? Actually, I'm glad you said that, because that's one thing I want to talk about. I forgot to talk about it. I, I do workshop for, for, for groups sometimes. Um, and this particular group I was working with, and um, <coughs> I decided to make my own, make it work while they were working on their works. And I couldn't bring scissors into the place I was working. So I just brought some papers and uh, just paper with me. And that's one collage in this show that I made by complete, only tearing the papers. No scissors, no cutting, only tearing. And it's um, one of these collages, only tearing the papers. I, um, um, I think it's one of these, I only tore the paper to use any, but many of these works are made by, uh, made by, um, it's one of these. By, um, <laughs> you, you, I saw it earlier today, which one is it? Somewhere on this side. Oh, this one. This particular work I made them just by tearing the papers into different shapes. Uh, and I, didn't, I couldn't use scissors because I couldn't bring scissors into that facility to work because of the kids in that particular facility. But I start by collaging first. Okay. I tear pieces of paper so when I'm not in that facility, I cut pieces of papers and collage first. And then I began to use uh, paint afterwards. And then lastly, I used pencil and draw through some of the images to get forms to come out even more. But I always begin my collaging first with paper. And usually, it's usually paper first, then fabric, and then uh, graphite material that I would draw with. Now there were times when I did start by using watercolor and uh, gouache and paint it first, but not in any of these particular ones. So then the colors you use, you respond partly to the color and the collage material yeah, and the yeah. fabric. I find out that I'm more successful when I, that once I started by painting first, I find out that I had a, a hard time making those work out. Mm -hmm. So by collaging first, it's, it's uh, much more, it's less, it's, uh, I like collaging first. And it's, a, it's sometimes get very active trying to paint first and then put collage over there. I end up covering a lot of that up anyway. So collage in this first. Okay, anyone else? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you.